All right, uh, so let's continue with our discussion. I am now moving into the discussion of the pack test. Um, apologies for the noise in the background. It's very windy today. So, so there are big trees outside uh, the house. And um, so as the wind blows, the noise is, is, is also affecting the recording. But I hope that you still... Um, will be able to, to, uh, to hear what I am discussing here. Now, so what is this uh, pack test <coughs> saying? Um, let's move on. Um, here you have a graphic, which I did in Excel, but I know that Excel, Excel has a problem when you're trying to plot a scatter. There's just some bug in it. Um, I could have shown you how you have to do it in Excel for you to get a more accurate scatter plot. But the idea in the graphical approach, I just want you to see everything here. Let's take that up. Uh, all right. So if we plot these two things uh, <coughs> against each other, you, that is, if you run your your usual regression of your earnings on education, then you generate your residuals, you square them, and you plot them against education. Um, you might get a systematic pattern, or such as maybe you find a, a quadratic. A quadratic or you might find a linear or a linear relationship whichever way the pattern goes um, or it might be a v-shape which is broadening over time um, there, there is a section in Gujarat which discusses that so please just read through it's a very it's a fairly accessible section but let's let's move on into the discussion of the pack test. <clears throat> now, what pack does? Pack says, well, uh, of a truth, we don't know this heterocidastic variance. Notice that it is an I, which shows that it's heterocidastic. We don't know. <clears throat> we don't know the true heterocidastic variance. It's a population characteristic itself but what we can do is we can make an assumption about its behavior so this is the assumption that Park makes he assumes that the heterocidastic variance is a multiplicative function of the homocidastic variance and your education to the power beta and your e that is the exponential to the power mu i so, so this is a multiplicative function there are three terms being multiplied here the heterocidastic variance education to the power beta e to the power mu i now of course you can see that this is a non-linear function we cannot estimate it using ordinary least squares for us to be able to do that, we have to linearize, which means to take a logarithms, to perform a logarithmic transformation on this function. And once we do that, as you know from your laws of logarithms, log mn, for example, is the same thing as log m plus log n okay so it transforms a product into a sum okay similarly log m to the power x for example will be equal to x log m okay 
So, so these are laws of logarithms. You would have done these in high school. Um, and so you should remember those as, as we as we continue with our discussion. So now if you linearize here, you now have log of the heterocidastic variance is equal to log of the homocidastic variance. Now it becomes a sum plus this beta one comes before the log in, in line with this latter part I wrote here, right? So it becomes beta 1 log education and here mu now multiplies the log of E. So that's how it becomes. But we know that the log of E is 1. Okay. So we end up with just mu i. And you can see now that this is a linear function. And now we can assume that the log of the homozidastic variance is beta 0. Remember, this is a constant, so it becomes your intercept in the regression. Okay, so now the challenge is we actually don't know this sigma squared i. It's a population characteristic. We can't observe it. So for us to be able to estimate equation 2, we have to improvise. And one of the, the ways we can approach this is to say, to ask ourselves the question, what can we use to stand in place of sigma squared i? Then Pak says we are going to use estimated residual squared, which means you run the original regression, which is... Um, where is our original regression? Which is earnings is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 education plus mu i. Once you have run that regression, the next thing is you generate your mu, mu, mu head squared. And you take that mu head squared, you put it there, and now you estimate that regression because, because you now know the left hand side. And this you already have from your original data set. You run that regression. The results you get now will give you, um, will generate estimates. I should have used the alphas here to differentiate it from the parent regression. All right. So, but we are only interested in this particular coefficient, not anything else in this analysis. The thing is, if beta 1 is found to be significant, it means that education is explaining the heterostatistic variance. If beta 1 is found to be statistically insignificant, that is, it is not statistically different from zero. So if we can find that it is statistically zero, then this thing collapses and we are left with beta 0. Guess what? Beta 0 is the log of the homocidastic variance. So it would mean that the left hand side is a constant variance. So if beta 1 is statistically 0, then it means we are talking about homocidasticity. That's essentially what Park is saying. So what we want to do then is to proceed and do the Park test. Let's let's run the regression. So we go to our regression routine as usual. That's how you have to do it. Um, okay. Um, you pick your y, which is earnings in this case. These are in thousands, of course. Um, then you pick your your explanatory variable. The first row has labels. Then we wanted to generate residuals for us. Remember, Park says generate residuals and square them. Okay. Then we take our residuals. Let's just square them now. Residuals squared. This is equal to that squared. Let me 
me remove the formula. Now I'll pick these two at once and take them to my original data set. Here. Okay. Now the next thing we need is pack says now you must take the log, the natural log of residuals squared and you must also have the log of education which is your explanatory variable and this is equal to log that um, is equal to log that okay so let's ask it to do that for us so now we want to regress this on that and check if the coefficient of education is statistically significant that's all we need so our dependent is now log residual squared in line with the pack test and our explanatory is the log of education uh, we don't need residuals then I say okay now here is your, your pack test this is the coefficient that we are interested in this is uh, its t observed this is its p value um, let's make it a percent so that you can readily see now <clears throat> of course here your now hypothesis your now says that this um, the coefficient of log education is equal to zero okay that's what it is saying so it is saying this coefficient is not statistically different from zero now the alternative way of saying saying the same thing is to say variance of the error term is constant remember that in the formulation of the pack test the this number here is the log of the constant variance so if this is statistically zero that thing falls away we are left with the constant here but this constant is special to us because it is actually the log of the homocystic variance okay so then your alternative says beta 1 is not 0. Notice here it will always be a two-sided test because we are not testing economic theory here. It could be negative, it could be positive, it doesn't make um, any difference. The point is we will have two critical regions so it will be a two-sided test because the two-sided test you will have two, um, you will have about three decision criteria. If it is less than the lower critical value, we are in the lower shaded region. Reject the the null. If it is in the ah, uh, it is above. If the T observed is above the upper critical value, we are in the upper critical region. Reject the null. If your t observed falls in between the critical values then what you do you must fail to reject the null okay now if if you go to if you are using the five percent level of significance and you go to your t table uh, which is here so this is five percent the sum of the the areas in the two tails is five percent, which means in one tail we have zero point zero two five, and we are working with fifty here. Um, so either if you use 
Um, what are we working with? We are working with n minus k. We have two estimated coefficients and our sample is 50. So we are working with 48. It's closer to 40. So this is the critical value that you're going to use, 2.021. And your t observed is only 0 0.189. So your decision criteria, which is stuff you've been doing all along, I will not state it here. Your decision criteria, we have already stated it here. If we find our T observed to be smaller than the T critical, that is the negative T critical, or is bigger than the positive T critical, we must reject. Or if it falls between the two, we must fail. So our critical value here is plus or minus 2.021 and our t observed is very small here it's 0 0.139 okay so 0 0.139 lies between minus 2.021 and 2.021 so we are in the unshaded region we failed to reject the null hypothesis and in this case, therefore, we must conclude that at the 5% level of significance, we don't have enough evidence to suggest that the error variance is heterostatic. So we shall proceed assuming that it is homocytastic, given the level of evidence that we have now. Okay, so that's it.